Here are some patterns that you can use when creating your patterned elephant this week. Here we're gonna learn how to draw a basic elephant. I'm gonna start by drawing an oval in the middle of the paper. It's gonna be a pretty big oval, but you don't wanna take up the entire paper. Then I'm gonna draw a big curved line coming out of the body to make the head and the trunk, and then a smaller curved line to connect to that larger curved line. Now I'm gonna draw one of my front legs of the elephant and one of my back legs. The back leg is gonna have a little bit of an S curve. And then I'm gonna draw the two legs that are on the other side of the elephant. So these legs are gonna to appear to be overlapped. So it's gonna look like those two legs that I just drew are behind the other two legs. Then I'm gonna draw my elephant's ear and I'm gonna draw a little hump on top of the head for the ear that's on the other side of the body. I'm gonna add in an elephant eye, some lines on the trunk for texture, and the elephant tusks. Now I'm gonna erase away any lines that I don't want to see, any lines that were overlapped, any lines that make the elephant look less realistic. So I'm just gonna erase away these lines that shouldn't be there. Finally, I'm gonna add in a little tail. Can't forget the elephant tail. Now you're gonna take a crayon and you're gonna trace over your pencil lines very carefully. You wanna make sure that those pencil lines are completely covered up. I would strongly recommend using a black crayon. As you can see, I'm using a dark purple crayon because my black crayon is gone. So I'm carefully tracing over these lines, making sure that the pencil lines are completely covered up and making sure that they disappear. And once you finish tracing over all of your pencil lines, you are ready to add your patterns. So I'm gonna take some crayons out of my crayon box and I'm gonna pull out all the crayons that are light in color, light in value. So when a color is light, you say it is light in value. When it is dark, you say that it has a dark value. So yellow, the color that I'm using right now, is a light color, so it has a light value. I am going to use all these different colors to add different patterns all over my elephant. You can be as creative as you want with your patterns. You can put your patterns wherever you like. You can add many different kinds of patterns, use lots of different colors. As you can see, I'm even using white because when I use watercolor paint on top of crayon, the crayon pushes away the watercolor paint. So any crayon lines that are there, those are going to peek through. You're gonna see those lines even when we paint on top of them. And that is called creating a wax resist. A wax resist is when you use crayon or water, crayon or oil pastel for your waxy material to draw a picture. And then you paint on top of those waxy designs with watercolor paint. The crayon pushes away the watercolor paint because it's waxy, it doesn't absorb water. And when it pushes it away, you can see all the designs poke through. So you wanna fill up your elephant with as many designs and patterns as possible, making it look interesting and beautiful. I'm even gonna add some grass for my elephant to stand on. And once you're done with your patterns, you are ready to paint. So you gotta make sure you wake up your watercolor paint with water. Use the appropriate size paintbrush, so a teeny paintbrush for the teeny areas and a larger paintbrush for the larger areas. Now, as you can see, I am painting with purple on top of my yellow area. That's because purple and yellow are complementary colors. So purple is gonna make the yellow really stand out. And now you can see some little white designs that I added with my white crayon that are peeking through the watercolor paint. I'm gonna make some of this purple a little bit darker so that the white really, really shines through. 
So you want to pick paint colors that are going to contrast with the crayon color. So colors that are opposite on the color wheel are called complementary colors. So if I really want some orange lines to stand out, I'm going to paint on top of the orange lines with blue. Blue and orange are across from each other on the color wheel, so blue will help orange to stand out. You do not have to use complementary colors, but wherever you can use complementary colors, it is going to make your design look that much better. So as you can see, I'm filling in all the white space on my elephant with watercolor paint. I am not leaving anything white except for the areas that I have um, used a white crayon. Those areas are going to stay white because I intentionally made them white. So here you can see those white lines peeking through when I paint with watercolor paint on top of it. Now I'm ready to paint my background. So I'm going to pick a color that I didn't use in the elephant very much. I only used a little bit of this magenta in the elephant's eye. So it should make the elephant stand out. If most of my elephant was painted purple or blue, I wouldn't pick a purple or blue background because I want the elephant to really stand apart from the background. I'm going to make sure that the paint goes on smoothly. I may wet a large portion of my paper first with just water and then paint on top of it and that will help the paint spread evenly across the paper. As you can see that grass is poking through because green and red are opposite each other on the color wheel. They're complementary colors. So this magenta, which is close to red, is going to make that green really stand out. Now, if you want to add a really fun technique, you can add some texture to the background by adding some salt. So you will have to wet your paper, make sure that that background paint is nice and wet, and then take some salt pour it in your hand and sprinkle it all over the background or in just some spots if you choose. You'll only see the texture appear when your painting is dry and you wipe away the salt. Have fun guys! Can't wait to see what you create!